Ladies and gentlemen, hello and welcome back. Happy Thursday evening. You're watching WCS America, the Challenge League. Max Toss joined by Axe Lab. Have a great time tonight. Hey, the players are ready. Let's do it. Game I'm two. The game. Of course, we just saw Neeb take game number one off of Huck with some really just great, solid, standard Terran play. Yeah. There wasn't any like creative catching Huck off guard with the weird build. In fact, Huck even caught Neeb off guard with the timing of the first Zealot uh, Stalker push and, and got a lot of damage on early off the bat. But Neeb's just his drop play, his, his micro and engagements was very solid. And I think he surprised a lot of people beating Huck in that first map. First, this is a best of three, which means uh, Neeb needs to win two, in or two games to advance on to the next round of the bracket stage. In the top left hand location, we have the Red Protoss player who must win two in a row here. Representing Team Evil Geniuses, considered one of the best non-Koreans to ever play StarCraft II. He is Huck. Plenty of staggeringly good results around the world over the past few years, including over in Korea. GSL Codes might get upset here, though, by his opponent in the bottom right-hand location, who is one win away from advancing to the next round of the bracket stage. He's 15 years old, and he lives in New York, in the United States of America, representing Team FXONA. He is Neeb. By the way, if anyone's like super interested, uh, Team Liquid has been doing interviews with uh, some of the players in WCS America. Neeb is one of them, so you can go check that out on TeamLiquid.net. Also, uh, there's also uh, live report threads that happen on that website that are very fun to participate in, so be sure to go see what the conversation is about, make your predictions, and interact with your fellow StarCraft II admirers, fans, watchers, etc. Also. Get on Twitter, hashtag WCS. We've been showing uh, tweets throughout the broadcast. So, your chance to get featured on stream if you... Yeah, just cheer your favorite player. Yeah. Go, go, Huck. Go, go, Huck. Hashtag WCS. Go, go, Neeb. Go, go, Neeb. Hashtag WCS. Got to remember the hashtag WCS. Got to hashtag WCS, or we can't yeah. find it. We can't no. put it on the stream. So. So. You can also tweet at us. I'm at Axel Toss. He's at ISXLab. If you like it. Neeb looks like he's doing the similar build, Reaper Expand, um, that he did last game. Yeah. That a lot of Terrans do against Protoss. It's a great way to scout. So, of course, a, a slight difference this game in that the gas was a little bit faster. And that allowed him to get the Reaper out before First Marine. Uh, and, and otherwise, it's, it's the same. So, the Reaper is going to come out uh, slightly faster the, in the last game. Terran players go back and forth between getting Marine first and Reaper, or, or going straight for the Reaper. So we meet again. Aw, oh, not the Axe Lab Zelt. Yeah, Axe Lab Zelt's gonna die. Actually, no, it's not. Stalker yeah. should be outside. See? He needs, he needs uh, a Stalker to protect him. The Axle Toss Stalker. Yeah, that, there we go. How come you're so much more of a useful unit? <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> Zelt is very useful. I actually, I, I love, I can't help but love Zelt. Zelt's are awesome. Like, they're just the best unit. I'm sorry. Nobody else has like super high technology. He's like, nah, don't give me a laser gun. Give me a sword. Like, who, who does that, right? Yeah. Only the zealot. That's true. A, says, light, yeah. a lightsaber. Are they swords? I don't know if they are. They're they're side blades. They're, they're like the, the Halo sword. Yeah, they're they're side blades. You ever so play Halo, their... Nick? Uh, I, no. Okay. I was gonna say I think once, but I don't think there's I'd... a there's a sword that you can get that like destroys everything with one swipe. Now, if the Zealots actually did have those swords, then it would really be my super yeah. favorite. Like, they'd, favorite. Be, they'd be DTs, I think. Yeah. Wow, this Reaper this is Reaper. just... Uh, Huck's just abandoning home with these two Stalkers and the Zealot. The Mushroom Corps, okay, the Mushroom Corps. I mean, he was hoping he'd get the same thing done in the last game, but Neeb's like, no, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna build an early bunker. Uh, this is actually a very conservative play for, for a Terran to do everything Neeb's been doing. Um, as far as, you know, uh, commands that are on the high ground and a bunker. Uh, both of those are fine. Oh, oh, Reaper, be careful. Oh, one more shot. Let's just do it. 
He did see the two additional gateways before the robotics, so that that could mean yeah. there's a potential for also, pressure. Also, corner boost on the on the cyber core was yeah. happening. So Hawks are looking to try to put on a little pressure. The uh, Neeb, of course, is going to stay on the high ground until he, maybe even until he gets a couple medevacs out. Um, we're just going to poke down here with these four Marines. They're like, never mind. Yep. No, they're not. Uh, they're not the, the. Let me in that bunker. No A-team squad of Marines right there. No. Did not want to go up against two stalkers, which is you know recommended unless they're. Right. They are some super marines. They have stem or something. Oh, Reaper. He's going to get another probe kill here if he sticks with it. Uh, yes. Yeah. Oh, will he die? No. Takes five shots, by the way, for you guys, for Reaper to kill a probe. Eight damage a shot. Yep. And Hawk is, has setting up a forward pylon. So he's showing the two stalkers in the Zell, and he's hoping he can warp in enough units and maybe catch oh, Neve off guard. Oh, speaking of catching oh, off guard. Very Huck is so fast. you got to be guy. so on top of watching that ramp. Does he have concussive shells? I don't believe so. Uh, no, he doesn't. He doesn't have any upgrades yet. He's uh, going straight for his thin as the first upgrade, which is okay. it's just correct because he's going straight for medevacs. And medevacs and minus thin are very good. Um, oh, here comes Tuck. The bunker's not yet done. Oh, I, I think I might have saved the force field for the ramp there. Taking out a marauder, taking down some marines as well, and Neve is going to have to pick up that command center. Neve should hold, be able to hold his ramp because yeah, of the, no, the lack of vision. The stalkers, yeah, as long as he stays. Uh, back on top of the ramp. Should be f that was a nice move by Huck. The one thing to keep in mind though is Huck's doing all this great damage, but take a look at the tech. He's not proceeding his tech. And, he and only has a robot. Neeb right. has attack upgrade done, stim three-fourths away done, and he's going to start double medevacs pretty soon. So this is a point where, yes, his army's small, but if he doesn't move it down and, and lose it to stalkers when he has no stim... Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, go back to high ground. Uh, he's going to trade extremely efficiently because it's going to be stim marines with medevac support against basic gateway units and there's going to be a, a timing window where he's going to have about a, a minute or two it's a pretty big window yeah he's uh, maybe a full two minutes when there's going to be no blink and no charge uh we'll see which one huck goes for as he gets that twilight council done if he goes for any of them well he definitely is going to. yeah it's much different from last game where he went for the double forge and he went for the the uh, support bay as well last game yes spending gas on yeah, yeah. last time so this no, I think it's going to be Blink, because he's making too much Stalkers. It definitely looks to be it. Oh, Scan, take on the Observer. Oh, uh, Stalkers coming forward oh, here. Oh, Dim is about to finish. Here. Medivac's coming out as well. And oh, there we go. Now he's got the Stim and the Medivac support. Pushing forward. Huck with no Blink yet. But Huck has a lot of units. Steve has got to be careful. Usually it's the four Medivacs is where you start getting strong enough to really yeah. bully. Oh, it's Charge. Okay, so... It's Excuse me. I actually don't blame him getting charged after seeing yeah. the Stim and Medivacs. I agree. And he lost a, a few stalkers there, too. Blink is really nice for being fancy, but if a Terran gets, like, four to five Medivacs, right. you can, like, be annoying to pick off a couple Marines, but unless you can pick off the Medivacs, yeah. when they move across the map and attack you, you're just going to crumble. So charge is a way to mitigate that if you can get a, a high Zell count. But there's still a little bit of time. I mean, I, I think they may be going too early, though. Uh, as Huck adds more and more gateways, he's going to have massive warpins. Well, Wait, you think, you think Neeb is moving out too early? Maybe. He doesn't have quite enough medevacs. He actually... I feel like hitting before charge might be good, but... You know, I, I, yeah, I think he doesn't hit before charge. I was going to say wait for four medevacs, but he actually never built a third and fourth medevac, so oh. he kind of has to go with two. And two is tricky because you don't quite have enough healing. Well, that's your Okay, going to overcharge going down onto the next yeah, gonna... I, I don't think he has There's a There's not a lot of units here, man. Yeah. Honestly, I'm very surprised. The well, he lost so many units moving down the ramp and fighting before he got the the stim and medevac. So his his marine count, he has a tech advantage, but I, I think he just I don't think he has the timing that he maybe he never had the timing we were talking about it. It yeah. could have been just not enough units, even though they're of higher quality. Because remember, he was restricted to one base for a while, which is going to stunt your income compared to obviously being on two bases, which Huck has been for a very long time. He is very bold. Uh, keeps, uh, See, if, if Huck had yeah. Blink here, imagine how, how, how scary that would be. It, it could definitely be very, very scary. Uh, Neeb would have to be so careful. Neeb is interesting. He's like hiding so much of his army. It's almost like he thinks Huck's going to I can't find blink. it He's, either. I mean, it's in the middle of the map. They're in patches of three uh, or four. Yeah. They're like, all, oh. And I, I, f I feel like that's intentional. Uh, when he's trying to get Huck to move out to fight him, if Huck only sees that small army, then as he kites back, all of a sudden, there'll be like more and more Marines every second he kites back. Um, but against charge lots, it's hard because he needs a small army. And Guardian Shield's going down. Huck wants blood. He smells it. The Stalker coming for charge lots, sprinting towards those Marines. Neve igniting those afterburners, getting out of there as fast as possible. Oh, now he meets up with the rest, and oh, Huck may Huck may have Huck needs to be careful. Time warp might be necessary here, but he might have enough energy for Fortune Overcharge. So. I, I, 
Yeah, he, he has enough energy for either one, one of each. Marine the flank is, is actually migrated very well, putting it back on, on the bottom side. So there's also a counter of units into the natural expansion of Deeb. We'll get a shot of that in a second. Both the numbers are going down onto the Nexus. Charge Loss coming out. Immortal popping out, but he's walking. There we go. Switching to target firing down those Marauders. So important to do. Huck desperately trying to stay alive here to this push. I think he will have enough, though. Meanwhile, again, he's doing that counterattack aggression into his opponent's main base. But again, so many bio here in the natural expansion here of Huck. Just too much healing. Trying to hold on, but the Metapax above, as you said, green rays of light and health. Marinating on top of this bio army, more is this and more zones uh, I think it might be. Huck does not have maybe the AOE damage that he needs, the unit count that he needs. He cleaned up his opponent's natural expansion. Uh, Neve is down to 14 harvesters. If Huck can hold on here, there's no energy left on the medevacs. But I was to say, the Fold and Overcharge would now start killing the bio because there's no healing. But the Fold and Overcharge is gone. Militia Floor is gone too. And Huck keep, he keeps throwing away units. What's being targeted? I think the Robo, targeting the Robo would be right. here. Yeah, he's, he's starting to go for the Forge, realized it was unpowered, switching to the Robo. The Immortal is not going to get out. Of course, remember, Neeb pulled all his SCVs. Two Archons. That might be exactly what Huck needs. Huck has 5,000 minerals, 1,000 gas. And yeah, if he can he oh, really get bio. a lot of, oh, so many probes going down. Archon is going to be focused fire. He's got to keep those Archons alive. They're so important. Zell is taking the hits. Oh, Archons. the Archon's not retreating. They got to retreat. Puck got, has needs plenty of resources. He needs to warp in more units. If he can hold off this 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 this, uh, this army from his opponent, he can win this game. Three charge loss being warped in. Arca getting very low on health. The shields are depleted, which means it's going to die momentarily. But four more zealots being warped in here from Huck, and Neve has to back away. Huck preserves his life wow. a moment longer. Thirty-six to twelve is the harvester tab. You know, Neve has got to wait. He's just got to wait. Sit back. Let the Metavax regenerate their energy. Repair them. But no, he's going to try to go drop in the main. Uh, this could be good, or could be one Archon shot away from losing his advantage, which is that medevac count. All these medevacs in the deep red. But the probes are exposed. Every probe is so important. Probes have to run. Every unit so important <gasps> at this point in time. The pylon! Oh, the pylon powering. All the warp uh -huh. gates is going to be depleted. But I don't even know if oh. Huck can... Oh, Archon trying to get the money shot onto the medevac. Charge is coming them. forward. He just got to get out of here before the Archon comes. The Archon trying to get the shop and sell. It's blocking the way. Meanwhile, we have a force. Heading to the natural expansion, that's a lot more marines. Oh, and that natural's weakened. He could actually stim and just power that down. Does, maybe. Does oh, Huck no, think Huck's he has storm? He's in front. Uh, maybe oh, we're waiting for feed, feedbacks, I guess. Feedbacks are I mean, there's, but in, the medevacs are all out of energy. Yeah, there we go. Okay. yeah. You feed back to one medevac that has energy. He's looking for it. The mothership core has never been remade. Huck trying to hold strong. This could be a 2-0 for the Terran player Neeb over the favorite Huck. And it might just happen. In fact, it I think it will. Huck losing his natural expansion. Well, should momentarily lose that natural expansion. Again, trying to hold on. But there's the GG, and Neeb takes the 2-0. Wow. What a game from Neeb, man. A beautiful game there. Uh, he was contained for so long, but he knew exactly when to pull the SAVs. Uh, he's like, okay, I have six medevacs. Yeah. You have no area effect damage. He hit right before there, were, there was uh, a lot of Archons out there. And without the Archons to shoot through those SCVs, they just tank too well. The Zealots, uh, yes, charge lets them connect, but they're only connecting with SCVs for the most part. And by the time they got through to the Marines, most of them were all dead. And, and then you're stuck with just Stalkers against this massive bio force. The counterattack would have killed all the SCVs, except there weren't many there. <laughs> they were all pulled across the map, and then yeah. you know, the, the rallied forces were able to clean up that Zell counterattack. Uh, very, very well. And, and Look at all the gas for Huck here. I'm wondering why he's not warping in High Templar right now. I think this doesn't feel as like a time to, to wait. And I, I, did his, was the, the Temple Archive Archives right? even done at this moment? Yeah, it's done. Okay, so, yeah, I mean, at a certain point he decided to, but I guess he felt he, he just needed units right now. Such a tricky and, little position. Yeah. There. But um, that's StarCraft 2. If it was, uh, that attack was half a minute later, there would have been Archons uh, up in time to receive it. Yes, absolutely. So uh, Nii playing a great series there, taking out Huck 2-0. Let's look at what has happened so far. Or let's see what has happened today, of course. Um, here are the match results. If you missed any of these games, they will all be on YouTube. If they aren't, all, uh, if they aren't there already within the next you know, 12 hours, usually. Uh, we got Jim taking out Oz, 2-1. Kapach taking out Telia, 2-1. XY taking out Hellkin, 2 to 1. And Huck falling to Neeb, 0 oh, 2. So both Evil Geniuses players, Oz and Huck, knocked to the group stages. And here are all the players who are advancing to round two of the WCS America Challenger League.
Top Phoenix, Ian Major, Vibe, State Theogonus, Ghost User, Puck, Illusion, Tasia, The Muslim, Jim, Kapach, XY, and Neeb. They're all going to be playing each other. And then the winners of all of those will play the losers from the round of 16. That's right. There'll be eight players uh, from the from the round of 16 that'll yep. drop down. Mm -hmm. Of the Premier League. Course. Yeah, round of 16. And that's coming up next week. It's 6 p.m. Eastern every day of next week. Yes. That's going to be a lot of fun live in studio. Do not miss it. It's going to be fantastic. It's going to be a ton of fun. Here are your groups once again. Lots of group diversity there. So many powerful players and uh, very interesting racial distributions. Group A and C with three Zergs in each and one Protoss, and then Group D with one Zerg and three Terran. Uh, very interesting how these groups ended up being, but definitely looking forward to that. That's going to be live players coming in person playing here, 6 p.m. Eastern, Monday through Thursday. Of course, right now, coming up in just a few minutes, is going to be Rules of Engagement. I'm going to analyze some of the games we saw earlier this week in the WCS America Challenger Division. Awesome. Looking forward to that again on the stream. Coming up next, Rules of Engagement. Be sure to stay tuned. And of course, round of 16 Premier League starts up next week live in studio from New York City. The players will be here. It's going to be a fantastic show. Be sure to tune in every single day, Monday through Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern. Until then, guys, we'll see you later. Dump for the night. Have a great evening.